Are you having trouble figuring out about research at UC Davis? How do you define research? I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you. So what is your definition of research? Well, I'm not sure exactly. Actually, I don't think I can come up with a definition. All I know is that we've been told that we're supposed to do it and that it'll be helpful for us to get into grad school, but I don't know what to do or who to talk to or where to start. How do I define research? Hmm. That's hard, actually. <laughs> I guess I define research as um, just trying to find an answer. And how to, I mean, how do you find this answer? I don't really know, but it's just that trial and error to find um, an answer to a question that has like nobody has really thought of. How do you define research? I define research as when you go out and you try to answer a question that little to no people have the answer for, which makes things difficult. But I think it's pretty exciting. All right, so we get it. Undergraduate research at UC Davis can be a very confusing, broad, and intimidating concept, especially for first and second year students. We're here to clear up some questions you might have so you can get involved as well. We also want to introduce you to some really interesting research projects happening right now in ecology and epidemiology labs on campus. What do you do in the lab? Um, I do a lot of PCR, a lot of gel electrophoresis, um, basically whatever the grad students need help with. Currently I have my own project on basically louse genetics, where I'm trying to find, uh, identify which species of louse that has been killing off deer in the United States. Right now what I'm working on, I'm actually working on a tick called Dermacenta variopolis and it's a tick that, it's, a, it's an American dog tick and it's found on a lot of animals, especially dogs, but you can find them on humans, um, all different types of animals. And um, it's a very rare tick and um, they don't have a lot of data found in California on this specific tick, so um, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be uh, finding and IDing all uh, all of the ticks that were found on um, like a human on a dog throughout California and once I've ID'd all of uh, every single tick that was of this species found in California I'm going to be trying to find patterns um, I'm going to be mapping them I'm going to be um, making sure that it is the right tick by DNA extracting them and so um, once I map them I'm going to see if there are any patterns such as like okay well they're located in this area so um, what could be the reason, maybe it could be weather conditions, etc. My role as lab manager is that I, um, I manage the day-to-day -day activity in the lab, so I manage all of the um, ordering, all of making sure our equipment is good, making sure that all the safety training is done for all the people that come into the lab, um, orientation for them, documentation as well as hands-on training and research. Um, My sole purpose in the lab is to make sure that everything runs smoothly and to make whatever projects the grad students or Janet brings to me work. So she brings to me um, samples and projects and says I want to I want to do mat testing. Um, my job is to make that happen. So I start from the ground up. I collect all the stuff. I write the protocols. I, um, if the protocols aren't working and I make them work. <laughs> I do a lot of troubleshooting in the lab. So I've talked to other professors who say that um, they don't end up spending a lot of time doing the hands-on mm -hmm. part of the lab. Is right. that true for you as well? Um, I, as a quality of life thing, I elect, I've forced myself to make sure I'm involved in some of the things that I want to be. Mm -hmm. um, because if I spend all my time writing grants and and sitting at my computer, I would just, it wouldn't be any fun. And, mm -hmm. and I don't think that, I think I would be divorced from really understanding what the data mean. Um, so I make myself be involved in some parts of it, oh, but okay. other parts, 
we do a lot of PCR as a diagnostic test for disease, mm-hmm. and I personally don't enjoy doing PCR, and I don't think I'm particularly good at it, so I don't do any of it. And in fact, I don't do a lot of lab work, because we students and technicians who are better at it than me. So the mm. field work I do, I, I don't do all of it, but I do make myself get out in the field a lot. And uh, what, what are some suggestions you have for undergraduates who are interested in getting involved in research? Um, I think one suggestion is that if you, you're, you're going to have to be a little entrepreneurial. Um, there are opportunities, you know, summer opportunities, um, you know, in Central America or whatever. Sometimes they're expensive, um, so it's worthwhile um, getting on the web, seeing what opportunities there are for research. Mm-hmm. Um, the good thing about those is they're expecting a student to kind of pay a tuition and go and do it. So that's good. If you're asking on campus, could I get involved in your research, it can be hard because, um, you know, there aren't that many labs that have... So, for example, a student who comes and wants to work in my lab needs training. So that means we have yeah. to spend time and have, have time and have somebody adequately around to do the training. So if you're, if you're asking to, to be involved in a research lab on campus, I think one of the most important things to realize is, um, I, I hate to put it this way, but you're almost asking for a favor. So be extremely professional. Um, you know, don't, don't come late. Don't, you know, sort of make unreasonable expectations. Um, and, and maybe if you have a special skill, point that out. Say, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I am, I've got a lot of experience with, um, you know, online programming, and I can probably help you in that regard, and then you can help me learn this other skill. So it's just kind of be, be aware that you're going into kind of a business negotiation, and you need to bring something to it.